People like games. What up, folks? It's Reggie with People Like Games. And this week on a new episode of Story Mode, we're talking about Pokemon. Not much else to say. It's the biggest franchise in the world and one of my favorite game series since childhood. But it's been about 25 years, over 100 games, almost a thousand Pokemon. There's a lot of history. So much so that I'm going to do a little series on it, which starts with the origin of Pokemon right now. As you know, on story mode, we like to go back and explore the creators a little bit. So we start with the legend himself, Satoshi Tajiri. Tajiri grew up in rural Tokyo, catching bugs and small animals, showing them off to his class, who would give him the nickname, the bug professor. As the city rapidly grew and arcade sprung up, he would earn a new nickname, the storm of the arcade, for his skills and ability to stay on arcade machines all day with barely any pocket change. Tajiri spent so much time at the arcade and he wanted to share everything he'd learned with his friends. So he began writing guides with tips and tricks to help the other players and would spend so much time on the games and guides that he barely graduated. By the time he did graduate, he didn't really care about college. At 18, Tajiri would take his guides a step further and created his own handmade magazine known as Game Freak, which was also his pen name as a freelance writer. The small operation was done at home, handwritten and drawn by Tajiri himself, doing much the same of what he was doing before. Soon, a small following would come around and Game Freak's popularity would spike with their issue on Xevious, a classic arcade scrolling shooter that Tajiri fell in love with. The issue dedicated to Xevious would sell over 100,000 copies and gave Tajiri his first real step into the video game industry. After some time, Ken Sugimori, who had just been kicked out of his house by his parents for his artistic aspirations, would hit up Tajiri for a spot as an illustrator at Game Freak after finding one of their copies in his store. With the release of the Famicom in 1983, Tajiri knew he wanted to take Game Freak off the page and into the console. The idea of Pokemon was already in its infancy at this point, as Tajiri had already been planning a game based on his childhood catching creatures, but he needed to establish a relationship with Nintendo if he wanted the game on their platform. After a few solid games, Tajiri would meet Shigeru Miyamoto, who acted as a mentor for all of Game Freak as they learned what game development was all about. In 1989, Game Freak officially became a game developer and Nintendo would agree to support it over the six year development of Tajiri's capsule monsters. Game Freak struggled over the span of development. Money was hard and Tajiri could hardly afford to pay his staff, leading to five members of the team quitting. Sugimori would stay on through the transition to game development and would single-handedly draw the art for all of the original 151 Pokemon. Anyone who's seen some classic Generation 1 Pokemon art will no doubt recognize Sugimori's signature style, which my editor will show off now. While the game was originally based on collecting and battling monsters, Dragon Quest and the Link Cable would inspire the final component of Pokemon, trading. In their spare time, Sugimori and Tajiri would play Dragon Quest and compare their adventures. Tajiri got frustrated when he realized Sugimori had two madcap items and he had yet to find one. With the link cable, which had just been released with the new Game Boy, Tajiri saw the possibility of players trading their items and monsters to help each other. Like many of the other classic Japanese games we've covered on story mode, go check out the Dragon Quest, combat was approached with the idea of simplicity. Inspired by other JRPGs like Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy, it was stripped down to only four actions per monster. And as he does, Shigeru Miyamoto added the final touch that would go on to be a staple of the series to this day when he suggested they release Pokemon as two separate games with their own exclusive monsters in each to encourage trading. Thus, February 1996, the game was released officially as Pocket Monsters Red and Green in Japan, only gaining the name Pokemon when it was shortened by localizers. Pocket Monsters Blue released in October of the same year as an update to the infamously glitchy Red and Green. Spoiler alert, Blue is still really, really glitchy. After the massive success of his brand new series, Tajiri put his media skills to work, making sure that the public wouldn't forget about Pokemon. Game Freak approached the massive Japanese publisher, Shogakukan, to create the first Pokemon manga, starring a talking Clefairy that was originally intended to be the series mascot. In the same year, and right around the release of Pokemon Blue, the Pokemon card game was published by Media Factory, 
setting off a whole new way to collect, battle, and trade Pokemon. Only a few months later, the Pokemon anime began its broadcast in April in Japan and solidified Pokemon's presence in just about every medium. By the time it reached the U.S. in 1998, Pokemon was already one of Japan's biggest hits and, of course, would see just as great success overseas. Pokemon's dominance in cards, games, and media has made it the ultimate collector's game, beating out competitors like Digimon and Yu-Gi-Oh! for over two decades. Almost everyone in the world would recognize a Pikachu at this point, and that's not going to change anytime soon. As the series continued to grow, it would begin to foster a massive competitive battling scene that's dramatically changed over the next three generations. But that's for next time, when I give you a rundown on some of the biggest changes to Pokemon battle mechanics and the impact they've had on professional play. So in the comments, let me know some of your favorite facts about Pokemon and Generation 1, and maybe we could do a bonus video on some of that. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, all that good stuff. We'll see you next time. Peace.